Uh, hey guys, I'm Philip Molina, and this Eric Voss is Eric Voss, and we are going to talk about a lot of the stuff that came out at Comic Con. But it was so much that we don't have time to do it the way we normally do it. So we're both kind of just gonna stand up here and give you maybe uh, a collection of our not quite first thoughts. We definitely watch these trailers again and again and again, but just a lot of the first things we noticed, and we're just gonna spit them right at the camera, improv style. Yeah, totally raw, unfiltered genius. So we're gonna do. Wonder Woman right now, but also check out we're doing Justice League as well. And there's a lot of tie-in, obviously, because the Wonder Woman character appears in both uh, films. So watch that trailer uh, breakdown after you watch this one, or if you already watched it, good job. Bonus points. You ready to get started? Let's do it! All right, <laughs> Let, let's do it. You're a man. Yeah. I mean, does that look like her? Right off the bat, Diana's finding Steve Trevor, who is her like love interest from the comics. He's crash landed on a beach of what's probably Themyscira. And this is sticking pretty closely to the origin story of uh, Steve and Diana meeting in the comics. Steve is an American intelligence officer in some versions. Some versions he's just a pilot, an American soldier. And uh, if you take a look around here, you can kind of tell that this is some sort of like interesting mystical place with these cool like rock formations uh, out in the water. It's gonna come back later in the trailer actually, but we'll get back to that when we see it again later. For now, yeah, just uh, it's worth noting that Diana has never seen a man before. You're a man. This guy's like basically like an alien to her, and I think that really underlines this is an origin story. Even though we already saw Diana in the Batman vs Superman movie, there she's like had you know what like a hundred years to figure it out. Basically, it's like I think I know what a guy looks yeah. like. He's got a wiener, but now she has no idea. It's, it's going to show a more naive version of Wonder Woman, who it's probably going to change after the events of this movie, and we'll see why she became hardened and grizzled in uh, Batman vs Superman, but this beginning character, she's basically just like a teen who's been kept in the house too long, like him. <laughs> you have been my greatest love. Be careful, Diana. I do not deserve you. So we see some more images of Diana's home island. And this woman that's talking to her is Hippolyta. This is Diana's mother. Now, originally in the Wonder Woman comics, Wonder Woman's story was that she was made out of clay by her mother, and she was endowed with all these various abilities by different Greek goddesses. But this movie's kind of mixing things up. Now, in the New 52, uh, you might know that Zeus had a big role in making, <laughs> wait, not with the fist, uh, in making uh, Diana with Hippolyta. And that Clay story ended up being just a cover up for the big Zeus Hippolyta love affair so that Hera wouldn't find out. Here it seems like the movie's kind of like just not wanting to say exactly, no, because I'm doing the best, that Zeus was that kind of involved, but she's just like, you know what? Zeus played a role. I had no father, I was brought to life by Zeus. So it's caught up to New 52. I don't think we're gonna hear the phrase, I was made out of clay. Right, and check out Hippolyta's crown in this scene. It looks like that might be the crown that Wonder Woman wears later. It's a beautiful day when a mother gives her daughter her warrior crown. I can't wait to get mine. And then moving forward a little bit more, Steve is bringing Wonder Woman back to man's world. Uh, this looks actually like the UK, and you can see those cliffs are kind of familiar uh, if you're from there. I've never been there, actually. Uh, I had to look at pictures. But we do know that this is definitely King's Cross station. Uh, that's a really famous uh, London train station from history and from fake history in Harry Potter. Rumor has it that uh, Wonder Woman's plans in this movie are to help end the world war. That's her motive for this movie. And we're back with Wonder Woman once again crashing a party she probably was not invited to with probably ulterior motives. And my guess here is that this German probably officer, I kind of see that cross looks German, he's probably her target for assassination or something. You do see she obviously is about to 
whip out a freaking sword. Uh, that could be Kaiser Wilhelm, which would be really interesting. That's the emperor of Germany at this time. And if they were like, oh, we could end this war if we just lopped off his head, uh, it would totally change the timeline. And Flashpoint fans know that that's a bad idea. So I'm thinking it probably is not the emperor of Germany. It could be some other representation. There are some clues that people are using to say maybe it's Kaiser. Uh, that guy famously had this short shriveled arm, which is such like a movie villain trait, by the way. It's his left arm, actually. Uh, there you go. But uh, he would always hide it from public view and note how the actor here is holding his arm behind his back, maybe because it's short and shriveled. But also, Wilhelm famously had this big old silly mustache, and this guy don't. So I'm thinking it's not Wilhelm. We actually have an idea, though, yeah. of someone else it could be that I think would be a little more interesting. Right, yeah. Check out this sword that Diana's planning on attacking him with. Uh, now, if this guy were just a human, she wouldn't need this cool magical Amazonian sword to kill yeah, him, right? Super delicate. So what if it's not a human, but it's a god? In fact, we're thinking it might be the god Ares. That's a god of war, and he's a recurring enemy to Wonder Woman in the comics. Now, we're thinking that it's possible that he's taking a human form and manipulating political events to bring the world deeper into war. That would totally be in line with what Ares is all about. Right, it's kind of like Vandal Savage, who you guys might know, like, always tries to create more war. Ares, again, the god of war. He wants to create war anywhere he goes. Maybe he's behind this whole thing. But also, maybe that's not Ares at all. No promises. Let's keep going. Have you never met a man before? I mean, what about your father? I had no father. I was brought to life by Zeus. Well, that's neat. Cool, so uh, this section, uh, first off, scares the crap out of you with Mask Lady, we'll call her. Uh, she actually reminds me a lot of the guy from Boardwalk Empire. Actually, after World War One, there were a lot of facial deformities and just in general, people missing limbs and jaws and whatnot. And so they didn't really have the best surgeons at the time, but they had really good ceramic makers who would just make these little real creepy face masks. But I guess it's better than a gaping hole. Speaking of gaping holes. Well, what about your father? I had no father. I was brought to life by Zeus. There's this comedy moment between Wonder Woman and Steve where she says that I don't have a father, Zeus brought me to life, and he's just like, Well, that's neat. And I think this is cool because we're seeing this comedy interplay between a human and a mythological demigod, and that really reminds me of what made Thor so great in that first Thor movie. So this is another origin story with a mythological demigod totally as a fish out of water. Uh, what's really interesting though while Eric fights off Kylo is that uh, Steve Trevor here is walking away from a German, I'm gonna call it a Fokker plane. He's holding these goggles, clearly he was just a in flight so was he just flying a german plane and if so then he landed maybe on a german base maybe undercover and i would love that if there's a whole like undercover spy plot line in this movie i think it would fit these characters really well but also it would set it apart from just the you know titans clashing that we've seen so far from dc if it has a almost like james bond in world war one element to it which by the way quick thing chris pine was once considered for james bond which made no sense because he was american moving on <laughs> Picking up where it looks like maybe right after that attempted assassination mission, we don't know if it goes well or not, uh, she's riding off on a horse. I think it maybe is right after that because it looks like her blue dress flies off and don't be a pervert, she's got her armor on underneath. And then it's worth noting, uh, she's on a horse and you're like, doesn't Wonder Woman fly? In a lot of her origin section, she doesn't fly actually. In one version, I think she gets like a feather from Hermes and pokes herself with it and that makes her fly. I don't know how though, but at least for right now, it looks like she's stuck on the ground. Okay, so next up in this section, we see this Amazonian warrior flying through the air. We're thinking this might be Robin Wright's character. She plays this badass aunt to Diana. And uh, they're fighting on Themyscira with these human soldiers. So we're thinking these might be soldiers that are uh, chasing Steve Trevor to the island. I actually have an idea for who exactly they are and what exactly is happening there. The rock formations are back on Themyscira. I think this is all part of that section we see at the beginning when Steve Trevor lands. I think he maybe stole one of those planes and maybe got chased uh, by the rest of the Germans and they followed him here, crash landed, Germans versus Amazonians, badass battle at the beginning of the movie. That's my guess. We'll get further in the trailer and then we'll connect back to this section. But I just gotta say, holy crap, Hop and Wright looks ripped on horseback. Look at her arms. Did you see the way she dispatches that guy? I'm pretty sure she was in flight with the arrows before. Somebody, I think, takes her bow and she just uses all the arrows as a mass knife weapon and just stabs him with all the arrows. And the guy behind her is smiling because he knows it's a 
amazing. Also, keep in mind that Robin is a big name actress and very talented at that. I don't think she's just gonna appear in these early scenes on Themyscira. Point is, she's way too talented to just keep at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, she's probably gonna come back in some way. We don't really want to say how because it might end up being a spoiler. Uh, hang in there, Robin Wright. You're probably in more <laughs> of this movie than we've seen. And then moving on. So, uh, in this section, we're outside of Café Bouvet. It's a French cafe, but I think this is still in Germany. That's the German word for beer and the German word for tobacco. I think most of the movie actually probably takes place in Germany. And zoom in right there. Look at that. Is that Steve and Diana doing a little dance? Yeah, it seems like they're practicing for maybe that dance scene that we see later in the movie. Like, maybe this is the time where it's like, oh, well, I don't know your human ways. <laughs> teach me the ways of dance. Teach you your ways of dance. Then I also just want to point out really quick, that's shield that Wonder Woman uses in, in this section here. That's not the shield that stopped Doomsday. A lot of people think it's the same shield. I'm gonna say that there's actually a story there with why she has two different shields, but it's definitely not the same one. All right, so let's move on. Next section we're seeing Wonder Woman walk out into the famous trench warfare of World War One. Uh, now this reminds me a lot of another Marvel movie, Captain America the First Avenger. That was another period war film in a different world war that was World War II and I'm thinking maybe that's why they placed Wonder Woman in World War One because they thought World War II has already kind of been done in a superhero movie. Also uh, check out that red sign right there. It says do not stand about here even if you're not hit somebody else will be. That sign was up on specifically British trenches so I think a lot of the movie like I said gonna take place in Germany, but also we're gonna see a British fight. Even though Steve Trevor's American, we're gonna be with British forces. He's got a British secretary that we see later. But also I just wanna point out something here too about these trenches and everyone being down below, but Wonder Woman up above. So the area above trenches, that's known as no man's land. Like that phrase is associated with just the place where you're not really protected. No man should walk up there cause he's gonna get shot or blown up. Uh, so isn't it incredibly appropriate actually that Wonder Woman is the one walking into the land that no man can enter. I definitely feel like that's also on purpose. You gotta remember World War One is not the much later World War II when women were kind of given a shot and the whole Rosie the Riveter kind of feel of that era of like, oh, women are stepping up. This is way before that. So it's just that much more interesting that they're putting a very powerful woman way before anyone's seen that in battle, especially at that time. <laughs> Uh, they're hanging out in a bar and this kind of feels to me like it could be an inglorious bastard situation where maybe they're undercover-esque again and don't want to be outed but they are hence the gun and hence Diana effortlessly knocking this would-be assassin out look at her face let's go like frame by frame on that face that is the definition of no effort or definition of boredom <laughs> right? Yeah, but check out this quick shot of this explosion as the group lines up against the wall. Those people are the same people that we saw in the photo back in Batman vs. Superman uh, in that awesome uh, email attachment that uh, Wonder Woman received. So uh, it seems like the picture that we saw will be taken at some point during the sequence. Yeah, in fact, you can kind of see those buildings look like the same buildings in the background of that photo. I feel like it's like, hey, take a picture, click, oh, we're suddenly in a battle. Or the other way around. Uh, probably the way I said, though, because you wouldn't take a picture at the end of a battle, like, phew, smile, right? <laughs> yeah. Also in the scene, we're seeing the famous glowing lasso of truth. That's the indestructible lasso that Wonder Woman uses to force people to tell the truth, and she's using it to uh, like deliver a, the truth. <laughs> yeah, kind of just like a normal lasso. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But then also, uh, there's more dancing. I think it's maybe the payoff to the practice dancing earlier. Uh, it's also probably in that assassination attempt. And we get this line. I can't let you do this. And then the sassy reply. What I do is not up to you. Uh, it's a cool line. It's a very empowering moment 
moment, but it's also funny if this is happening while they're dancing. That's something that you traditionally, you take a man's lead while you dance. And the fact that he's like, oh, I'm leading this situation. She's like, no. She probably like, steps on his toe too at the same moment. But let's go back and focus on one moment in this section where Steve takes this German plane that we saw him walking away from earlier. I'm wondering if this is, like we were saying earlier, part of the opening of the movie uh, where Steve might be undercover on a mission to steal some kind of information from the enemy, posing as a German soldier and uh, escaping a crash landing on the island. A beautiful island with beautiful women uh, who are all murderous. <laughs> then, uh, so Steve, he like runs under a wing at one point and that plane just was making us realize like, oh yeah, German pilots are a big deal in World War One. I. I mean, Red Baron is this famous character, but also famous characters, enemy ace. And that is a potential villain that we haven't really seen anything about anywhere, but could definitely be a good wartime villain. Or we might get a villain at least kind of like that. And uh, one more thing when we're talking about these shots of the planes, these shots of Steve shooting up all the other German planes might be setting up for some dogfight scenes, some plane on plane battles. That would be really cool to see. It also reminds me of that scene in The Force Awakens uh, where Finn steals a TIE fighter and uh, uses it to shoot up all the other TIE fighters that would chase him. It's a real smart escape plan. I want to point out that that armored truck that gets like owned, it uh, actually was in that shot way earlier where they're dancing in front of, which is like, again, the most confusing order for what order things might happen here. Like, hey, we're in a huge battle. We should take a picture and then slow dance. I have no idea exactly what's going on there, but let's just say that that cafe section probably is going to be a huge moment, one of the bigger set pieces of the movie. We also see a lot of shots of Wonder Woman jumping into this uh, warehouse looking flat and she just tears up the joint. It's awesome. It's so badass. She looks like when Batman was taking down all the guys yeah. in the warehouse in, in Batman versus Superman. Just one of the cooler fights in that movie. You know what my favorite part was there? What? Freaking rifle behind her back and her like butt <laughs> breaks the, the rifle in half. Don't, we don't have to see it. I'm only show, the rifle. Only show Gal Gadot doing it, not Eric. <laughs> show this Gal Gadot. Don't. He doesn't know what he had brought. Exactly. Uh, Etta Candy. I'm Steve Trevor's secretary. What is a secretary? I go where he tells me to go and I do what he tells me to do. Yeah, well, where I'm from, that's called slavery. I really like her. Fantastic. Oh, Ladies, I'm have you? I do. I like her. And then, uh, just wrapping it up here, the little tag here right at the end with cute little Etta Candy. I'm, I have a thing for, like, little tiny British women. She is uh, Wonder Woman's best friend from the comics. She's in pretty much every version of the Wonder Woman comics. She's also Steve's secretary, like she is in this movie. She actually ends up marrying Steve in some... Oh, spoiler! In, in the comics. <laughs> Probably not in this movie, uh, though I would yeah. love that yeah, ending right. where it's like, Diana, I've enjoyed our time together, but you've made me realize what I really want is the opposite of an Amazonian warrior princess. All right, so uh, these were the things that we noticed upon watching this. I think that this movie honestly looks pretty freaking good. Yeah. Like, I was hesitant. I was like, oh, they're going to do another chill war movie, but honestly, it kind of won me over just this trailer alone. So now I'm super excited for it. It's moved to probably a top of my list. But let us know definitely if there were things you pointed out. Like I said earlier, we kind of had to knock this one out as fast as we could. So I wouldn't be surprised if we missed a thing or two. Uh, if we did, I would love to hear it. Uh, you can hit me up at Fimo on Twitter to let me know some small stuff. Or you can hit me up on Twitter at EA Voss to let me know some big stuff. What? <laughs> you said uh, small stuff. Well, because you can put longer messages to me on my oh, Facebook page, oh, right. uh, facebook.com slash Fimo Knows, or regular size stuff. I don't like talking about stuff so much. Follow uh, at New Rockstars too to find out when these videos come out. Yeah, subscribe to our channel if you aren't subscribed already at uh, New Rockstars here. Hit it, subscribe. Yeah, uh, and then check out our Justice League trailer breakdown. She's in that movie too, so if you like her, uh, you should definitely watch that too. And we're gonna do the same thing. In fact, we're gonna shoot it right now and just go over it real quick and just let you know some of the extra stuff that we noticed. Hopefully it's not the same things that you guys noticed. Uh, and finally, uh, if you want to support us in doing these kinds of things, it's patreon.com slash New Rockstars. It's the reason why we were able to shoot this video today. Uh, those donations make a huge impact, so thank you for the people that do it already and thank you for anyone else that's thinking about doing it so go ahead and click the link to check that out thank you so much bye 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 bye, bye.